What's up everyone, Andrew Bainey here, and it is time for a new FAQ video. It's been a little while since I've done one, I haven't done one in the new house, so I figured let's just do one. Did I say do one enough times there? Probably. So in this video, all of the questions are taken from my Discord server. If you want access to that server, it is completely free to join, and you can find the link to that in the description or the pinned comment below. Also, in addition to answering some questions today, I also received a mystery package, which I will be unboxing in this video. Very very curious to find out what that is. So with that being said, let's move on to the first question. It's from my homie Justice Gash, aka the Fuzz Imp Master Jr. over on my Discord server, and he asks, what do you think about the new Fanfret Majesty 8? He is of course referring to Ernie Ball's first ever 8 string, which is already sold out by the time this video came out by quite a bit. Basically, they made 150 or so of these 8-string fan fret majesties, which is really cool because it's the first time Music Man has ever done an 8-string, and also the first time they've done a fan fret. So it was really surprising to see both of those features at once. And I was pretty surprised that they ended up doing a majesty as their first 8-string. I would have suspected them to do an 8-string JP and definitely not fan fret. So they threw a lot of curveballs at us, and uh, it was pretty cool to see. What do I actually think about it? Well, I mean, I really like the majesty shape personally. I know some people love it or hate it. I personally am on the side of loving it. Um, and the looks pretty good for the most part. I think the only thing that I wasn't a massive fan of just by looking at it, no pun intended, massive fan, <laughs> um, was the angled bridge so it doesn't necessarily it, it's weird because it looked much better in videos than it did in pictures but basically the bridge on the guitar is of course also angled because it's a fan fret instrument um but for some reason the bridge just looks like super big that was the only thing that i thought looked a little strange on it i thought everything else about it looked awesome and i would have loved to try one but you know i don't have $5,300 Canadian ready to go before they sold out, especially since they sold out in less than 12 hours. Next question comes from Bren Can You Gent? I think you can tell me the answer to that one. Next comes from Ra Da Da. How much time goes into setup and finding a good tone for each video, or do you already have some tones and VSTs in mind? For the most part, on average, it doesn't take me too long to find a tone. It's for a couple of reasons. Number one is when I'm doing my videos, I'm going more for speed than accuracy most of the time. Like I'm just trying to get these videos recorded and done pretty quickly. Like I do the entire process in usually a single day. Um, it's very rare that I take more than a couple of days to do a video. So usually the tones are just like whatever I think sounds good on my first impulse. I'll be like, sure, that sounds good enough and I'll just kind of go with it. Unless I'm trying to do a video specifically on a very specific tone, then obviously I'll spend more time doing that. But it, I don't think it, it's ever been more than like an hour fucking around with tones. Um, sometimes like halfway through the recording process, I decide I don't like the tone and I just switch it all together. But basically what I start out with is always the exact same presets, which is usually the Fortin Nameless Suite because that's just the one that I tend to gravitate towards liking the most. So I just have a DI going into that. And then as I'm recording, if I'm finding that it doesn't sound quite right for the context of the video I'm making, then I'll kind of just switch it around until I find something that I like. But most of the time, I'm still just going with Neural DSP plugins because they're just so easy to use. And it's way easier to switch a plugin than to actually like reamp using all this stuff. I'm still not very good with real amps and need to learn how to do that better. This next question is one that I get a lot from Coom Slayer, which is a hilarious name by the way. Uh, and they ask best eight string guitar for a wee lad like me on a budget. So I get asked this all the time, what's the best eight string guitar on a budget? There isn't really like a one answer for everyone type situation. I know a lot of people go for like the Ivan as RG8s because they're like the cheapest eight string, but I personally really, really do not like those guitars. Um, I've owned a bunch of RG8s over the years and I've tried improving them. And to me, they always kind of don't sound or feel that good no matter how much work you put into them. That's just my opinion. Some people love them, fair enough. But in my opinion, what I usually suggest to people is just to find a used guitar because that's where you're gonna get probably the most value for your money. So if you can find like a used Ivan is RG A8, those are so much better than the RG eights or even a used prestige. I think I got my used Ivan is prestige for like under a thousand dollars, which is crazy because those guitars were like 2000 new. Um, there's also a bunch of like awesome Schecters that are not that expensive. This is an interesting one coming from a sizable bear. If you were to have to take a complete career change and not be able to play music again, what do you feel like you'd want to do slash study to do? 
This is a really hard one because I really don't want to ever think about this because I would like to just keep doing my own thing forever. Not having a traditional job is pretty fucking awesome and I would like to keep it that way if possible. Um, however, the job I had right before this was actually pretty good as well and that was more in like the artist management realm of the music industry. So I guess I would still be working in the music industry or I would try to be working in the music industry even if I wasn't playing in it because then at least I'm doing something related to something I'm passionate about. Um, I actually did already go to university and have a Bachelor of Arts, so I do not want to go back to school because I didn't really like it. Uh, so I probably wouldn't go back to studying anything and I'd probably just find a different career in the music industry, basically. Next question comes from Doom You Lizard Boy. This question just will not die and they ask, will we ever see Baking with Baina, please? This has been like an ongoing meme in the Discord server for a very long time. They for some reason want to see a cooking show or baking show with me and Johnny and I cannot cook anything or bake anything because I'm just, I don't know, I have no interest in baking or cooking so I don't really know how that would be a video. I know me and Johnny have actually talked about it before, but we just like don't know what the fuck we would do or like how that would be an interesting video. Like I feel like most of my viewers would just be like, what the fuck is this? Why is there a baking show on this channel about guitars? You know what I mean? But anything's possible, I guess. Next question comes from Cheese. <laughs> if Carcosa was to headline a world tour, who would you want as the supporting act? I don't think I would want to headline a world tour at all because in my opinion headlining is probably the most stressful thing to do and we are certainly not at the stage where we would be headlining anything yet but it, hypothetically let's say we were much bigger than we are and we were headlining who would I want to bring well I would probably bring just basically all of the homies bands because that would be a lot of fun like I would love to go tour with Black Tongue again Spirit Box although again in this it's hard to even imagine them opening for us because like why the fuck would they ever do that but let's pretend um i would love to tour with like volumes i'd love to tour with like left to suffer reflections viljarta humanity's last breath chelsea grin there's so many fucking bands dude i don't know how to how to narrow it down next question comes from have it when is the next time you're gonna have a competition on this channel uh, i don't have any in mind at the moment i did do like a very small giveaway around christmas but I just kind of did that on Facebook pretty low key because I just gave it away locally. Um, I don't really know. That's a good question because I did enjoy making that competition a year or so ago with or in collaboration with Reverb. That was a lot of fun. So maybe I can sort something out with some sponsors and do something fun like that soon or, or just give away something of mine. I'm not sure. Good question though because those are fun and I do like doing them. They're just stressful. What's up y'all? So I got this mystery package here. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm assuming it's a guitar pedal. I know the factory where it came from because they have sent me something in the past, but they have given me no communication. So I don't know what it is or if they're like wanting me to make a video on it or why they sent it. So let's see what it is, I guess. Without giving away my address on camera. So as suspected, it is of course a pedal. Wait, what? Okay, now I'm extra confused because I already have this. Why did they... Why, why did they send me another one? Oh. Congratulations on the new house. We thought you could use a little more green from all pedal. Pedal in a velvet case. Let's see what this is. I'm very curious now. Oh shit, that's super cool. Wow. Thank you so much, all pedal. They sent me a green version of their Slammerai pedal. See if I can get it to focus here. Where's my focus? Come on, focus on this. If I like get out of the frame, will it do it? My camera doesn't want to participate. I'm gonna move back a little bit. So this is what all pedal sent over to me. And it's just a green version of their pedal. Oh my God, it even says my name on the back. Andrew Pena, one out of one. Wow, that is super, super cool. I'm very surprised. I had no idea what this was going to be. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Thank you all so much, all pedal. That was a super cool present. I'm, I'm blown away. Thank you so much. Next question comes from Jeff Plays Guitar. What's up, Jeff? Now that you're settled into your home studio, did it take a long time to adjust your ears to the new space versus your previous kitchen slash office setup? Yes, it did. It is honestly insane to me how different my mixes sound in this room. Uh, I realized immediately that there were a lot of things that I didn't really like about my mixes like basically right away because I can actually hear things better in here. Um, and yeah, there was, I think the biggest changes were that 
I felt like I realized pretty quickly that I was using like way too much bass and had way more treble in my mixes than I thought I did. So being in this room has helped me to kind of like tame that down a little bit. Obviously I'm still learning and I haven't done too much here yet because it's been a month of me living here, but it's definitely made a big difference and I hope that you all can hear that as well. Okay, next question comes from The Horny Donut another great username. Is there any particular reason you use seven, eight, and nine string guitars over baritone six strings? I've also seen this question a bunch before, and the reason is honestly because I just didn't know what baritone guitars were when I started playing extended range guitars. Uh, obviously the meme here is like, hey, I don't use all nine strings, why do I have nine strings? I get it, it's a funny meme, and it's also to some extent true. Uh, mostly because baritones weren't as popular and I didn't know what they were back when I was learning how to play guitar and how to record. At that point in time, that knowledge wasn't really available. So to me, I was like, well, the only way I can go lower is to add more strings, because what the fuck did I know, right? This was back in 2010, 2011, when this information wasn't as common knowledge. Neither were these types of guitars. So to me, that was just the main reason why, is that's just what I learned on. And now I'm comfortable with that. Even though I do have baritone guitars now, I still tend to gravitate to grabbing the eight string just because it feels a little bit more familiar to me for whatever reason. I mean, I know I only really use four or five strings regardless, but I don't know, I, I, that's just what I like basically. Okay, and then we have a couple of questions that are kind of the same. So it's basically how much work is left to do in our house and when do we get a full house tour? The answer to that is I have no idea. Although this room, my studio is pretty much basically done other than literally the ceiling fans need to be replaced, which I've just been putting off. The rest of the house is a much different story and needs a lot of work still. So I don't know if we will ever do a completed house tour because it's probably going to be a long time, unfortunately. <laughs> Next question comes from Egg. Song that means the most to you. This question is very easy and the answer is Absent Post by my band Carcosa. That song has a very, very, very deep personal meaning to myself as well as everyone else in the band. I won't get into it too much in this video because it's very, very sad and unpleasant to talk about. But if you want to know more, uh, our vocalist Johnny Chardulo did a full explanation of the song as well as the whole EP which all ties together because it is a concept record. If you feel like bumming yourself out, go check that out because I don't feel like talking about it here unfortunately, I'm sorry. Next question comes from Alex, what's the song you are least proud of? I can't think of a song in particular necessarily, but the entire Phantom of the Hill album by my previous band Galactic Pegasus, pretty much all of us unanimously did not like that record, so really like any of the songs on that album would probably go in this category. Which is unfortunate because some of the songs we thought were really good, but basically the production on the album, as well as some of the lyrical choices that were made just made us not like those songs at all anymore over time. So that whole album was very disappointing. And that also relates to Smonk's question is kind of basically the same answer. Okay, that's gonna do it for this FAQ video. One more time, all of these questions were from the Discord server, so go check that out if you're on Discord and you feel like joining up. I also wanna give a big thank you to all my Patreon members whose names are on the screen at this point in time. If you're ever interested in audio downloads, guitar tabs, stems, or shout on the screen, you can find all that over there. And of course, a massive thank you to the folks over at All Pedal. I cannot believe they hooked me up with this super sick housewarming gift. I'm actually blown away. It's very, very nice of them. I did not expect this ever, and I, it was just super cool. It totally just brought my mood up today, and I really appreciate that. So that's all for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.